Hello Dr. Rigsby. Um, before I begin, I just want to let you know that I would have much rather had this conversation with you in class um, rather than on video, but unfortunately my schedule got tight and it is what it is. So here is the video. Um, before I begin, I want to let you know that I chose this passage because I feel that it speaks to many of the ideologies held dear by Walt Whitman, and it also encompasses a few of the values that are that are found frequently in his works. Um, there's an immense um, notion of patriotism in this passage which captures his attitude towards the relationship between the poet and the United States itself. There's also commentary on fragmentation which is a reflection of Whitman and who he was as a person and a poet and how he came to be um, an immense character in the role of literature. And lastly, it references the spirit of the working class and how their spirit is actually the spirit of the poet and really who Walt Whitman was as a poet. So I'm going to begin. It's on page 638, second paragraph. <coughs> Master, I am a man who has perfect faith. Master, we have not come through centuries, caste, heroisms, fables to halt in this land today. Or I think it is to collect a tenfold impudence that any halt is made. As nature, inexorable, onward, resistless, and passive amid the threats and screams of dis disputants, so America. Let all defer. Let all attend respectfully the leisure of these states their politics, poems, literature, manners, and their free-handed modes of training their own offspring. Their own comes just matured, certain, numerous, and capable enough, with egotistical tongues, with sinewed wrists, seizing openly what belongs to them. They, they resume personality too long left out of mind. Their shadows are projected in employments, in books, in the cities, in trade, their feet are on the flights of the steps of the capital. They dilate a larger, brawnier, more candid, more democratic, lawless, positive native to the states. Sweet-bodied, completer, dauntless, flowing, masterful, beard-faced, new race of men. Swiftly, on limitless foundations, the United States, too, are founding a literature. It is all as well done, in my opinion, as could be practicable. Each element here is in condition. Every day I go among the people of Manhattan Island, Brooklyn, and other cities, and among the young men to discover the spirit of them and to refresh myself. These are to be attended to. I am myself more drawn here than to those authors, publishers, importations, reprints, and so forth. I pass coolly through those, understanding them perfectly well and that they do the indispensable service outside of men like me which nothing else could do. In poems the young men of the state shall be represented, for they outrival the best of the rest on earth. So to begin this passage, Walt Whitman addresses uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson as master, but this doesn't necessarily indicate a relationship of servility, rather Master was a term that was applied to indicate a teacher or a mentor or a writer. All of the things Ralph Waldo Emerson was to Walt Whitman. Um, it wasn't surprising for him to address uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson in this way, considering his desire to often be intimate with his readers, which is frequently conveyed in his writing, including songs of myself. In the first couple sentences, he explains that we, presumably the United States, have not come through centuries of caste, heroisms, fables, to halt in this land today. In this, I think he is speaking to his perception of the United States as the ideal environment for poetry. In his, worst, he, in his works, he suggests that the United States is perfect for poetry for a number of reasons. By citing the caste system, he may be suggesting that the United States exists in a unique day and age where there is freedom for the working man, freedom for him to make choices, to think for himself, 
to perceive the world through the eyes of the poet. It reminds me of the line he wrote where he relishes the fact that the United States leaders tip their hats off to the people instead of the other way around. Perhaps he is saying it's difficult for a poem to see the, a poet to see the world in a system with rigid rules, tall tales, and little transparency in a society and a governing body. Um, it also reminds me of that notion of not dwelling in the dry bones of the past and finding one's own greatness. Whitman truly believed that the United States was primed for great poets and for people. Moving down farther on in the passage, there is an excellent line that states, let me pull it up real quick. Let all attend respectfully the leisure of these states, their politics, poems, literature, manners, and their freehand and modes of training their own offspring. For me, this, for me, the thing that stood out most in this line was the notion of many pieces making the whole together, which ties into Walt Whitman's idea of the person being composed of different parts. That meaning there isn't one piece that makes something or someone great. Rather, it is the relationship of all the parts together to make the whole even better. Um, as I moved farther through the first paragraph and into the second, there is one light that's one line that stood out um, among the rest. Um, it states, "Every day I go among the people of Manhattan Island, Brooklyn, and other cities, and among the young men to discover the spirit of them and to refresh myself." It isn't surprising that Walt Whitman had great admiration and respect for the working class, considering he was self, a self-made, rough, working-class man himself. Uh, but I think this line goes a little bit deeper than that. I think he is pointing towards the philosophy, his philosophy that the poet shows all parts of the world and is all-encompassing and channels people. He believed that at its roots, the working class best exemplified the spirit of the people, and he immersed himself in that spirit every day. To Walt Whitman, the poet was a seer. Many would find it difficult to find poetic spirit in common people, but for Whitman, this is where true spirit lies, true poetical spirit at least, instead of in sensational people or places. This was unconventional for a poet of Walt Whitman's time, but it was who he was as a writer. Um, the second paragraph becomes even more interesting in the very next line that states, I and myself more drawn here than to those authors, publishers, importation, reprints, and so forth. I think this is a direct reflection of the unconventional nature of both Walt Whitman poetically and personally. He was alienated from the power of the dominant culture, which at the time was mostly associated with high class. Um, these were the people that were writing poems. These were the people that were most often successful with poems. But this didn't deter him from producing his own wonderful works where he drew inspiration from the common man. Um, I guess it's time to wrap it up. Um, overall, I think this passage provides incredible insight into the man Walt Whitman was, despite being only two short paragraphs long. Um, it reveals deep personal philosophy and is indicative of his ideas and values as a writer. It helped um, me at least situate myself inside his mind and better understand where he's coming from when I began reading Song to Myself and actually many of his works. Um, but yeah, like that wraps it all about up. Um, if I don't see you before the end of the semester, I uh, just want to say thanks for a great class. Bye.